can move to minus five, four strokes behind our leader, Maria Yorth. 88 active international players on the tour, 19 different countries. There is our leader, another international player, the Swede, Maria Yorth, and she's in a bit of a trouble, right, Mayor? She is, Linda. Right now she's waiting for Kelly Robbins to hit, who has her troubles as well, but she's inside the hazard line. This is terrific driving hole, bunkers down the left side, hazard down the right. And now we're looking at Kelly, and she has a severe side hill lie. Kelly does. She's 155 to the whole location. Breeze in her face, starting to pick up again. Key to this shot is you have to choke up on the club slightly so that you don't hit the ground first. She hit a three-wood off the tee and hooked it to this position. Her upright swing will certainly help her in this kind of position. Well, her troubles are not over. Drove it perfectly here yesterday and left the 17th hole with birdie three. Well, all Maria can do is take a sand wedge now. She's got a tree that will come into play in her backswing. You can see her take a little, little practice shot, and that's yeah. all she could do, and she did a good job of it, just moving it forward about 25 yards. One of the few Swedish players who did not come to an American university or college, but went to school in Scotland at Stirling University. Hetherington now. Second shot on 17 for Leslie Spaulding. Oh. oh. Leslie at minus eight, creeping up on Maria Yorth, our leader. There's a nice smile as Leslie looking to win her first LPGA Tour event of the year. And Judy, along with Jean Bartholomew, we were talking about the strength of the international players. 19 of the 36 official events on the LPGA Tour were won last year by an international player. You know, one point that has been made um, that, that maybe is valid is that American young women have more opportunities to do more things and maybe not so many get focused on just this one sport because a lot of sports are presenting opportunities um, for young women growing up here. But um, the foreign players are so focused on golf in their respective countries and then come here to the university programs um, that they've just made a tremendous impact. As we watch Sayri Pog, now Jean, you, born in Queens, New York, <laughs> when did and where did you start playing? I started playing, I guess, when I was six, we moved a little bit farther out to the suburbs. I would think. To <laughs> Third shot here from Maria Yorth. Just a sandwich from 105 yards, breeze in her face. Get up. And that was what you call chunky. <laughs> A moment ago, the second shot on 15, the par four for Lori Kane. I love her rhythm. Great rhythm, uh, nice compact golf swing. She's uh, a repeater, one of those players who does it the same way time and time again. Good thing yep. to be in golf. <laughs> It never gets too high, never gets too low. Always a good sign to see. Always and looks it, happy. Yeah, always <laughs> looks happy, and so are we here. Come right back. This Mother's Day, make, make mom very happy with diamonds me. from K Jewelers. Make just one heart the heart you sing to. For over 80 years, Kay has traveled the world hand selecting only the best diamonds for her, like Kay's quarter carat diamond ring and heart pendant in a cherry finished jewelry box for $1.99. And you will be happy too. With diamonds from K Jewelers, you will make mom very happy. After 1999, there will not be any more sports in this century. 
so be sure you get the best of it. Call for ESPN the magazine now. ESPN the magazine is big, bigger in size, with unbelievable photos, interviews that'll surprise you, and your favorite ESPN personalities in every issue. In 99, don't look back, because ESPN the magazine is mostly about what happens next, with previews, predictions, and amazing access to places you've never been before. Subscribe now. Get 26 issues a year's worth for just a dollar an issue. A dollar an issue. That's 66% off the newsstand price. And better yet, you'll get this official ESPN the Magazine polo shirt absolutely free with your paid subscription. Before you know it, this century is going to end. So make sure to capture every great sports moment we have left. Call now for ESPN the Magazine and your free polo shirt. 1-800-544-9977. This for Birdie. A moment ago, Rosie Jones. Wide of the hole. Now live action and Sari Pak. Six behind our leader. This to go to five behind Maria Yorth. That's a great birdie, but she was in the rough on the right there. She only one hole played easier than the 13th yesterday, so very important that you make four at that par five. Third shot a moment ago. Fourth shot, rather, on 17, Maria Yorth. Sit. Also earlier on 17, Kelly Robbins' third shot. Probably a lob wedge, huh? Yeah, terrific to stop it like that because she was clearly in the deep stuff. <laughs> Robbins at minus five, four behind the woman in yellow, Maria Yorth. 24-year-old Swede who leads at the moment as we return to live action, but her lead is just one over Leslie Spaulding. And this would be for Bogey. Certainly has let this hole kind of eat her up, Linda. It's a hole that uh, a lot of players feel like you can birdie. you got 17 and 18 really seem like good birdie holes. Winner of 23 amateur tournaments before she turned pro. This putt of about 18 feet down the hill. This for Bogey. A little left to right, I think. A lot left to right. <laughs> well, she didn't like it from the moment the putter <laughs> uh, struck the ball, jumped up and away from it. And Judy, I don't think she liked anything from the tee on. Julie Inkster now, out of the sand. Third shot on the par 4, 14. The most recent winner on the LPGA Tour in Sacramento three weeks ago. Her second this year. Shaney Waugh, as we look down, 16. The par 3, 149 yards. Where are we going with this, Gene? Where are we going? <laughs> It'd be nice to see it go in the hole. Uh-oh. Didn't sound like she hit it solid. And that tells the story right there. But a break. The ball's sitting up, um, even though it's in the deeper rough, and plenty of green to work with. No reason she shouldn't get this up and down. Kelly Robbins. This for par at 17. Pretty quick little putt here. Great putt. Much par. Keeps Kelly four behind our leader, Maria Yorth. She's pretty accomplished at staying even-tempered. Um, whether playing very good or very poorly, Kelly's demeanor is pretty much the same. Well, now, after the double bogey of Yorth, it puts an entirely different light on this putt for Leslie Spaulding. Yorth drops to seven under. Spaulding could now go to nine, just about a four-footer down the hill. Great putt. Spaulding does just that. She is our new leader here at the Chick-fil-A, Leslie Spaulding player who played some of her golf on the Futures Tour, the developmental tour that will now send its top three players to the LPGA Tour starting in the year 2000. Lori Kane, who had birdies 13, 14, and 15, on the tee at 16, the par three. Like she pulled that a little bit. Still an uphill birdie putt. 
as we look at Sherry Steinhauer's second shot on 15. I ask Eugene Bartholomew your approach. What's in your head heading into tomorrow now that you're in the hunt, heading into tomorrow's finale? Just keep going for birdies. I made a lot today. I hope there's some left for tomorrow, but uh, play aggressive and have some fun. <laughs> It's difficult did to you have, have a fun chance playing though? this game. I, but I know, but Gene, did you have a chance to have fun today? Did you enjoy your wonderful round of 63? It's funny, that was my goal, because I really have not been striking the ball well or having fun at all, and I went out and said, no matter what, just go out and have some fun today, and uh, don't let anything bother me. And I went out and all of a sudden started hitting it well, making putts, and uh, I enjoyed it. It was fun. I was a little shaky there. I can tell you halfway through the round. I can tell you something with great assurance. 63s are going to make you have a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope it continues, and we thank you, Gene, thank for taking time out fun. with us. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. I hope so. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Gene Bartholomew tying a record here for a course low for 18 with her round of 63. It's a career best for her as well, but we have a new leader here. It's Leslie Spaulding by two over Gene and Maria Yorth and Lori Kane. We'll be right back. Finest leather boots are at Big Bill's Boots. resource. Call us. Equitable is a member of the Global AXA Group. Sometimes after NHL tonight, I take my knowledge to a sports bar. There's always someone there who thinks his knowledge is the biggest. Then I show them Second. We're back at the Chick-fil-A. Rachel Hetherington, like this one. four yeah. strokes behind our leader, Leslie Spaulding. This is her second shot on the 17th hole, par four. 378 yards. There are bunkers down the left as you play from the tee and water to the right, although you really have to be somewhat errant to find the water to the right. Fairway's much faster this year, though. Hetherington yeah. coming off her best finish of the year. It was at the Long's Drugs Challenge a few weeks back in Sacramento. This tournament plagued by rain in recent years. Golf course drier this year and in beautiful shape. The players say thank you to Superintendent Jeff Plott, who's done a beautiful job with this golf course. That's all we kept hearing, right, Judy, earlier in the week. The players who just love the job Jeff has done and his staff. Green open in the front, the hole pretty near the center of the green today. To the tee at 18, our leader, Leslie Spaulding. And she's played that perfectly down the right side. Plenty of fairway over there as there's water on the left. She fired a career best 66 yesterday, and she is continuing with her minus three on the day. This for birdie for Sherry Steinhauer. This would get her within two. 
slow start to the season for Sherry Steinhauer, but second a couple of weeks ago in Sacramento. She was somewhat humorous the other day. I said, you live in California now. You're not supposed to start slow. <laughs> she said, well, I just have that Wisconsin in my blood. I, I have to start slow. Now I'll look back on Sayre Park. Sayre just has 87 yards out of that first cut of rough. Uphill lie, pretty good lie. Ought to be able to stop it. Needs to get down. Sayre, five strokes behind our leader, Leslie Spaulding. Minus one on the day. To the tee at 18, the par five, Kelly Robbins. The line is the left-hand bunker on the right side of the fairway. And that's just where she took it, Judy. It's perfect. A moment ago on 14, Rosie Jones. Well, she kind of flared her tee shot to the right, had 134 yards, caught a bit of a break. She was on the upslope. Left a little. Come on, honey. Right there, right there, right there. To 18 now, and Maria Yorth. There you go. Well done. It's a good shot. Just take down the right side, drawing it back, and it'll be perfect. And it's long. Maybe a little heat on that one after the double bogey at 17, which, in fact, was her eighth hole. These leaders are playing the back nine. It is their first nine of the day, though. People started to realize who Maria Yorth was when she finished in a tie for 10th at the Nabisco Dinah Shore. To 16, and Lori Kane. Looking for her fourth straight birdie. But it would not fall for Lori Kane. Tells me she feels very positive on in this course, on this course, playing it. She was right there in the hunt a year ago. Thank you. And just a reminder, our coverage continues tomorrow here on ESPN2, beginning at 2.30 Eastern. To 17, Jane Crafter. That was for Birdie. She'll have that to stay at minus four. <coughs> Jane Crafter among those trying to catch Leslie Spaulding, looking for her first victory on the tour in control right now. Imagine TV. 200 miles of bad road, 600 bottles of nitro, one mercury mountaineer. That's nitro, highly explosive. Payment on delivery. Any questions? Yeah. Who's he? Hey, hey, highly hey Bones. Yeah? That would be your driver. <laughs> mountaineer, no problem. On the course and off, we're driven driven to play and stay healthy. You have to be driven when it comes to your health. After menopause, women are more prone to health risks like osteoporosis. Identify your personal health risk by talking to your doctor. I do. Talk to your doctor about options available to help manage your postmenopausal health. You know the game isn't over after menopause. Brought to you by Eli Lilly and Company. I hate grapes. Green and purple and seedless. Sure, they taste great, but on a supermarket floor, they can make for nasty slips and falls. Hi, I'm Al Mangoni, a safety specialist with Liberty Mutual Insurance. There's no reason the supermarket floor should ever be a dangerous place. So we're working on non-slip flooring and other materials to keep you safe. At Liberty Mutual, we have hundreds of experts helping you live a safer, more secure life. It's insurance in action. I also hate bananas. And they're on. Get ready for this year's Triple Crown. ESPN Classic takes you inside the track for a look back in time at horse racing's crown achievement on Run for the Crown. But to get ESPN Classic, you got to call 1-800-CLASSIC. Nine half-hour specials reveal the inside stories behind every legendary race with insights from jockeys and race experts. Run for the Crown starts Monday, April 26th at 7.30, only on ESPN Classic. Call 1-800-CLASSIC today. 
Sari Pak for birdie. Well, she has a putt that's going to move a little bit to her right. Sayri making a move toward our leader, Leslie Spaulding, who stands at minus nine. On 17 now, this for birdie for Hetherington. So Rachel Hetherington moves to within three of Spaulding. To 14, and Rosie Jones eyeing a birdie try. And this is a very good opportunity right here, Linda. Rosie hit an excellent shot out of that right-hand rough. Has a putt that's going to swing to her left. There's a ridge that cuts through this green. and Needs to put it outside the hole. Maybe two, two and a half balls outside that right edge. Just kind of let it fall down. Has an interesting style. Carries her hands very high. It gets the putter shaft very upright. Um, feels that that helps her to stroke straight back and straight through. Turns her toes in a la Arnold Palmer. That style would only fray my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> so Rosie will have this par putt to stay five behind our leader, Leslie Spaulding. And speaking of Spaulding, we head to 18. Leslie has 210 to the front of the green, uphill into the wind. I don't know if it's quite reachable for her. She has been standing here waiting, though, letting the group finish off the green. Well, just off the front in the short cut of the rough, looks as though it's sitting pretty nicely. Mary, she has to be stretching her driver playing with these two players. Both Kelly and Marie have been 25 yards ahead of her every time. Kelly Robbins now only 185 to the pin. And she has let that iron shot go way right. I mean, big time right. That's just... Having her troubles, Judy, just really has not hit any real good shots except on the first hole. Well, she's caught a break. She's in, um, she's in fairway grasp, but a very difficult shot over the bunker um, to this hole today. Rob, it's Marie, plus one on the day. And Maria Yorth, who I think was very hot after that double bogey, she's only 173 to the hole in this par 5. Again, uphill into the wind, has an uphill lie, which will shoot it up just slightly. It'll help her elevate it to this elevated green. Turn. Turn it on. turns a little left. It could be perfect. Well, this Great woman is a opportunity. No question. This woman is a competitor. What she does when she's not playing golf, she loves curling in Sweden. Ever try to curl, Judy? I don't think we'll do that this afternoon. Okay, Linda. we'll skip that activity. <laughs> to 16, and Shaney Waugh for birdie, for par rather. If you remember the missed green just to the right at 16, chipped to this point. So she'll have that for bogey if she makes that. Wall will drop to minus three. Six behind Leslie Spaulding, who is our leader. Best finish for Leslie in her career was a tie for six, but now she likes her position. It's at the top of this leaderboard here at the Chick-fil-A. I'm a student, and I do a lot of research on the web. So what I wanted, what I really had to have, was a powerful desktop computer. Then someone told me about Dell. I got on the internet. Dell built a desktop just for me. This direct way actually costs less. Okay, so I don't always use it for research. Cool. Discover the Dell Dimension XPS with the next generation Intel Pentium 3 processor at 500 megahertz for only $19.99. With applications optimized for the Pentium 3 processor, you get smoother, cooler, more realistic 3D graphics. Add in great audio, video, and a big monitor, and you can get more lifelike games and a rich internet experience. The system also includes two new games, fast, easy internet setup with Connect Direct and 24-hour-a-day phone tech support. Dimension, with Intel Pentium 3 processor at 500 megahertz, just $19.99. I'd be lost without it. No doubt. Be direct. Dell. Come on. 
Stay there. Stay there. Go in. Yes! Wow, she's intense. Oh, that's nothing. You ought to see her when she's on the course. All right. LPGA. Hey, we can play. We don't get many shots up there. We get one shot, we're on the ice. You gotta practice, you gotta practice good. Let's go! Nice, nice. Breathe, boys, breathe. Hey, what if I was a fan? What are you gonna do? Very nice, very nice. Now do it again. The Kentucky Derby is run in what state? What is the Kentucky Turkey? Louisiana. Texas. Just around the corner. To learn everything about the Kentucky Derby, tune into ESPN and ESPN2 for complete pre-race coverage and ABC for the Run for the Roses. I don't know. Linda Cohn, Judy Rankin back with you here at Stockbridge. Second round of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. Third shot for Kelly Robbins. <coughs> back to live action. Our leader, Leslie Spaulding. And it was not that difficult a shot, but we certainly had to have the right touch, and Leslie Spalding did it absolutely perfect. Little uphill putt now for another birdie. Spalding enjoying a two-stroke edge over Jean Bartholomew, Maria Yorth, and Laurie Kane. Spalding 97th on the money list this year. It takes a certain mindset, a good mindset, to play with two very long hitters and um, uh, stay with your game plan. Um, her average off the tee is in the 225-yard range. Kelly Robbins is third on the tour this year at 256 yards. And Maria Hjorth uh, is ranked eighth at the moment at 254 yards. So um, Leslie Spalding doing a great job of playing her own golf game today. As we take a look at our projected cut, which looks like it would be even or better, 93 players at plus one or better. And Judy, what's interesting about Leslie, she's hit every shot very solid today. There have not been any shaky shots from hole one. It's been good, solid golf, and that's why she's three under. And Maria, you are listening to her caddy. Caddy's talking about maybe three or four inches out. The ball's going to break, and she definitely doesn't do any reading of the greens. It's all the caddy. You don't see that very often in a player. But when you've been putting as poorly as she says she's putted, sometimes you have to count on somebody else. Mary, she's ranked 109th on the tour. She said yesterday the key for her was getting it close. That's why she made them. This is a 35-footer, very speedy downhill putt for Eagle. Great effort. And that makes up for one of those strokes in the double bogey on the last hole. So Maria can tap in for birdie, and she'd be within one of Leslie Spaulding. You know, the golf course playing very difficult, but it certainly produced a lot of low scores yep. yesterday. One thing, though, I noticed if you looked at all the scores yesterday is this golf course produced more of those awful things we call others. Those numbers on a hole over a double bogey. Nine of those yesterday in the first round. At the tee at the par 3 16th is Sherry Steinhauer, 149 yards. <coughs> Great rhythm, has a nice full golf swing. On the tee, the par 4 15th, Sari Park. Very little wind, hazard on the right. Good looking drive right up the left center. Hole yeah. takes a turn to the right just in the driving area. Back to 18. Kelly Robbins for birdie. Of course, even though Robbins is on 18, they are making their turn here. Now, Leslie Spaulding with the opportunity to really jump up the leaderboard some more. This putt's going to break very strongly to her right. A lot of greens on this golf course cut kind of out of the hills, and the high hill is on her left. So this could break almost, depending on her speed, could break almost a foot to her right. It's one of those putts, if you hit too firm and lip it out, it, it could be looking at almost the same length coming back. So just a nice, delicate touch. Pick out your spot, putt at that spot, and let the land just drift the ball over to the cup. This for birdie. Wow. Well,
Well, still 33 on her first nine holes today to match up with that <laughs> opening round of 66. Pretty darn good play. So Spalding keeps that one-stroke edge over Maria Yorth. Best finish of the year this year for Leslie Spalding was a tie for 31st at the standard register ping. Now Kelly Robbins. And again, the par fives where she should be hitting in two and having eagle putts. This putt for a par. So a bogey to par on the par fives. Let's go to 17. Lori Kane, her second shot on the par four. The par four 15th, the second shot for Rosie Jones. Into the win from 188. Fell into that a little. Needs to on, hook a little bit. A little. Right there, just sit right there. I'll just okay. let Rosie do the commentary. Really? Who needs you, Bill Kratzer? That's right. <laughs> Sayri Park. Sayri with a big drive off the tee, only has 149 yards. Jeff taking his familiar position, lining her up. Just a nice smooth seven iron. Boy, this is a good looking shot. I'll tell you, Sayri Pak, Judy, just warming up. It's those kind of shots we see so much of from May on of last year. That's the putt of Sherry Steinhauer's. That was for Birdie. That's what's left for par for Sherry. Sherry, she can make that. She'll stay at minus six, three back of our leader, Leslie Spaulding. Linda Cohn, Judy Rankin, Mary Bryan, Bill Kratzert with you on this, the second day of the Chick-fil-A. We'll be right back. Quest Communications presents Quest for Success with teaching professional Mike McGittrick. This week I'm joined with one of the most successful players on the LPJ Tour, 19-time winner Julie Inkster. Today Julie and I are going to talk to you about ways to improve your chipping. Julie, what do you see when you're playing in pro-ams, one of the errors that you see with the average golfer in chipping? Well, I think most amateurs, instead of trying to hit down on the ball, they try to scoop the ball with their right hand, so the right hand breaks down and kind of cups like that. Trying to help the golf ball up in exactly. the air. Exactly. Well, why don't you go ahead and set up to the golf ball, and we'll okay. show the viewers here. When you set up to be successful at chipping, there's a few key points you want to do. And number one, you can see Julie has the ball back in her stance right of center. Number two, the handle of the club is forward by her front pocket and a little bit more weight on her front foot. And what that does, it allows the golf club to work down into the ground to get the golf ball up in the air. So let's watch Julie hit one here. That's great. Let's do one more there. So her golf club is working more downward into the ground, more of a descending angle versus working level to the ground. So to be successful at chipping, it all starts from the setup. And if you can remember those key points, getting the ball back in your stance, the handle of the golf club forward, then have more of a descending angle into the ground, you're going to hit better and more consistent chip shots. If you have any trouble with your game, contact your LPGA and PGA pros. Quest for Success with Mike McGettrick has been brought to you by Quest Communications.
discover the treasures of Georgia. Contact us for a free Georgia On My Mind travel guide. When they say the World Wide Web, it really is worldwide. This is something that this guy had. Uh, that he sent it along to me. Um, this is a Pakistani uh, birdie. Um, it was from the Pakistani badminton team. And so I got that. I gave him a Drew Bledsoe uh, football. They have no idea who Drew Bledsoe is. But, uh... Back at the Chick-fil-A, Rachel Hetherington, her third shot. On 18, the par 5. Took a sand wedge and threw the ball up very high in the air, nice and soft. Hetherington, three shots behind our leader, Leslie Spaulding. A moment ago on the par 4 15th, Rosie Jones. This her third shot. Chip from the edge, her style of setup, not unlike the way she putts. Back to live action and Sari Park. After her iron shot, perfectly flag high. Nine feet right of the hole. You just don't want to read more into the spot that's there. It's just outside that right edge. Oh. Okay, good shot. Boy, you hate to let those go. So Pac is staying four behind our leader. Say, read the 1998 AP Woman Athlete of the Year. That is a big treasured award. Laurie Kane now for her fourth birdie in her last five holes. Oh. So Kane will take care of that to stay at minus seven. Third shot ahead for Crafty, Jane Crafter on the par 5 18th. Now, if there's a player who can create shots around the green, it is this woman right here, but she's going to have to do some creating. The ball well below her feet. The rough is deep. The ball's going to hit the surface of the green and take a big swing to her right. Crafter one of two Australians in the top ten right now on our leaderboard, the other being Rachel Hetherington. Jane, though, has made her home in the United States for many years now and um, resides on the east coast of Florida. Earlier on 17, Shaney Waugh, her third shot on the par four. Her good play, much needed, and, but a bit of a surprise, and has already missed five cuts this year. As you take a look at our leaderboard and you see Leslie Spaulding with that one-stroke lead, just to let you know, Beth Daniel with a second round 66. Nice to see her shooting low scores again. Donna Andrews as well, due for a good round. She got it today with a second round 67. Donna is minus one for the tournament as we get you caught up a bit. And add Michelle Estel to those shooting 67. Good timing. She just popped up there in a group at minus three, along with Nancy Lopez, the new host of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. Nancy's name will now be attached to Chick-fil-A from now on. Good to see that for the Albany, Georgia native. And, of course, she still lives in Albany. Kari Webb. Another Australian you might have heard of, minus two, but she's just through four. Leading money winner on the LPGA Tour. As we head you down to 18 for Jane Crafter, she continues on 18. Shot a 67 yesterday's first round. And she's at minus four, or five behind Leslie Spaulding. Actually left the ball on the best side of the hole. Now she's putting back up into the slope. She's giving herself a good birdie opportunity. So Jane is within four of the top.
crowds always coming out for this event. Very popular event, not only with the players, but with the galleries. As we take a close-up look at Rachel Hetherington, three behind our leader. Well, I said earlier, enjoyed her first win in the 98 season, won the Betsy King Classic, and won it in style, beating Annika Sorenstam in a playoff. Hetherington breaking in on the tour. Her rookie year was the same as fellow Queensland native Kari Webb, 1996. Slips just from left to right. Speaking of Kari Webb, that's where she is here on 14. This for birdie. And Kari Webb is now at three under. Can never count out Kari, no question about that. That's the biggest understatement of the world. And we showed you the Mercury bonus pool earlier, and we'll show it to you again. Kari Webb standing on top thanks to that big win at the Standard Register Ping, the second event of the Mercury LPGA Series. And here's how you earn points. It depends all on where you finish on events that take place during the Mercury Series. 100 points for first place as it dwindles down to 10. Now hear how, how players can earn Mercury points during these events, events that include the Mercury title holders as well as the JAL Big Apple Classic that takes place in July in New York. Wonder if that duck knows the meaning of Mercury bonus points or knows that Leslie Spaulding is the leader here at Chick-fil-A. Sherry Steinauer now, her second at the par 417th. Good. All right, good shot, Sherry. Well, the breeze up just a little. You can see the flag blowing it. Um, uh, the early players today played in almost perfect conditions. It was very still. To the tee at 16, the par 3, 149 yards, and Sari Park. And Linda, the same exact yardage as she had on the fairway on 15. And as the player looks towards the green, this green is back in amongst the trees, so the flag is not moving, but there is some wind in their face. Say Reed going with a seven iron once again, just just a nice, comfortable one. Nothing extra. A quiet lower body. Great balance. She's hung this a little to the right. Just about the same results as the last hole. Outstanding. So Sari puts herself in position for another birdie. Pock currently four behind our leader, Leslie Spaulding. Sari, of course, still looking for her first win of the 1999 season. Just wherever you are, just stand really still. As Rosie instructs the gallery. Yeah, there's a couple of kids back there trying to get a better look at. What's a very nice a way to at. put it, though? Well, she does live in the area, so, you know, you never know when she'd run into these people again, Judy. Tell you what, this, you know, I really have to marvel at Rosie Jones. I mean, she gives up so much length off the tee. She won last year. She's won a lot of tournaments. and I mean, here she is. She's right in the thick of it again. Talk about a battler. It's good to have Rosie on your side. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Rosie with a six act. Something that you, Judy Rankin, know quite very well. Get up, get over the bunker. Okay. Not a good shot, but she can still make par from there. Rosie Jones among the very talented players trying to catch Leslie Spaulding. Spalding looking for her first victory on the tour this year. Can it come at the Chick-fil-A? We'll be back. Imagine TV. Try to understand, Becky. These men are outlaws. And just because they admire the stylish good looks of our Mercury Sable doesn't give them the right to ride into town and take it. Don't you see? Somebody has to stay behind and stand up to them. I know. Nothing says love like beef.
Sports Century's 50 Greatest Athletes, a year-long celebration. Number 38, Ben Hogan. Friday at 10.30 on ESPN. Presented by General Motors. Sherry Steinhauer at minus 5-4 behind our leader, Leslie Spaulding. And Mary Bryan is there. Mary? And Sherry hit a 6-iron that you saw just before break. It's absolutely perfect. And she's one of the more exciting players when she's on her game. She stakes it, as you might say, with her irons all the time. Now, this is just under 5 feet. We'll break just gently, I believe, to her left. And if she has a weak spot in her game, it's short putting. But when she's on, she makes everything. But an exciting player, and this for another birdie. And another birdie it is for Sherry Steinhauer, making her move. The second round of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. Linda Cohn, Judy Rankin, Mary Bryan, Bill Kratzert with you here on ESPN2. And a moment ago on 18, the par 5, the second shot for Lori Kane. Well, that was from the rough which eliminated her chance to put the ball on the green, but she has left it in a very good spite at the spot at the far left of the fairway. Now Shaney Waugh, her third shot on the par five. Go. Go. Go in. Good shot, Shaney. To 16, and on the green at 16, this for Birdie for Rosie Jones. Rosie right in the swell that's just over that bunker, 38 feet from the hole. Yep. <laughs> 14, second shot for Annika Sorenstam. Are you sure? That hat's a fooler. Hey, whatever works. And I think it's working. We may see a lot of that hat. <laughs> of course, it may have nothing to do with a hat. Kim now for birdie here on 17. Oh. The Korean making her move. Getting within four of our leader, Leslie Spaulding. That is the third shot for Lori Kane. So Lori Kane has a chance to go to minus eight and tie with Maria Hjorth for second place behind Leslie Spaulding at minus nine. Now Cindy Flom for birdie on 16. Tried to make her third birdie on this first nine holes. All kinds of fashion statements on the head today. Cindy's new um, visor type hat. Bright and sunny day here in Stockbridge. That's the kind you find in Texas, Judy. I've not seen a hat like that. <laughs> Big. We have a bit of a crowd on top of this leaderboard, and what a leaderboard it is. Leslie Spaulding with that one stroke edge at the moment. Stay tuned. Uh-oh, that new car finish is fading fast. You need the amazing professional polymer sealant. Apply lightly to your car's finish, let dry, then wipe off. Put your car to the acid test. Hydrochloric acid eats right through carpet and metal filings. But protect your hood with polymer sealant, and there's no trace of damage. Polymer sealant coats your car like an invisible glass shield. It bonds to your car's finish, so nothing penetrates. Car dealerships charge $200 for the same protecting formula. The original polymer sealant is yours for only $19.95. But wait, also receive the original poly wash. Repels water and eliminates water marks. There's more. A four-ounce bottle of the polymer sealant scratch remover. Remove surface scratches from any car finish. Call now and get a second eight-ounce bottle of sealant free. Original polymer sealant, poly wash, and scratch remover, only $19.95. To order your polymer sealant, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-909-3800. Or send check or money order for just $19.95 plus shipping to the address on your screen. Doing a show is emotionally and physically exhausting. Afterwards, the last thing you want to do is talk to the media. 
Oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a TV show. I mean, we're done now. We go out and do the next one. But, um, you know, we definitely had some problems in the top of the third segment. I guess it was a teleprompter. I mean, I know management will get after me for, you know, for mentioning it on the air like this. But it's like they bought old Soviet, you know, technical equipment. I mean, like, what is this, community access television? I'm a role model. I want to be a role model. Charles Barkley doesn't want to be a role model. I do. And you know what? I'll be a role model to his kids. You're about 10 minutes away for the first of three Stanley Cup playoff games coming your way on the deuce today, beginning with St. Louis and Phoenix. The Blues trying to take a two games to none lead there. How about the Flyers? They're trying to do the same against Toronto and Colorado with the edge over San Jose. A triple header for you on the deuce. And, of course, National Hockey Night on ESPN and another Stanley Cup playoff game, 7.30 Eastern. The Bruins on the strength of great goaltending by Byron Defoe looking to go two up on Carolina. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network, go.com. Julie Inkster, her second here on 17. Julie Inkster at one under par for the day, an opening round of 69 yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Back to 16, a birdie try for Sari Park. <coughs> Phil, she has given herself great opportunities and can't cash in. Shaney Waugh for Eagle. Good effort by Shaney. She'll have that for a birdie, which would get her to within four. Okay. As we get you caught up on all the scores here, the second round of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship, our projected cut is even. Leslie Spaulding with that one-stroke edge over Maria Yorth. A group at minus seven, including Lori Kane, who finished in a tie for second here last year. Jane Crafter at minus five. And speaking of Jane Crafter, she is on the list of those that are taking part in the Avista Legend series, and you have to be over 40 to take part in this. And Jane ranks fifth. It's a series that is led right now by Hollis Stacy, enjoying a wonderful rejuvenation here in 1999 on the tour. And this, the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship, now in its eighth year. As we head out to the par 414th, you know, we teased you a little bit by showing you Annika Sorenstam and, well, basically her lid. And, you know, my partner here, Judy Rankin, had something to say regarding that. Well, I just had a thought, you know. Um, what can you expect from a player who hails from the home country of Jesper Parnovic? <laughs> Nice observation. This to go to minus four. So Annika Sorenstam is five strokes behind our leader, Leslie Spaulding, at minus nine. Linda Cohn, Judy Rankin, Mary Bryan, Bill Kratzert with you as our coverage continues on the Deuce. Today's second round coverage of the LPGA's Chick-fil-A Charity Championship has been brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. By Mercury, the official vehicle of the LPGA. And by Snackwells, the official snack of the LPGA. Live well, snack well. Finest leather boots are at Big Bill's Boots. <laughs> And oh, well, she's left that out to the right. It might catch that big gaping bunker. Yeah. Well, she is pretty deep, pretty far back in the bunker, and not an easy bunker shot. Same hole, second shot for Kim. Young player who's known as Peanut in Korea, and this is perfect from 195. Perfect, baby. Oh, it's a good shot. We had a oh. great picture of her, Mary, with the long shaft at fairway wood. Um, it has to be nearly as tall as she is. Judy, I'm feeling tall right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot of the 
clubhouse at Eagles Landing Country Club. As you get yourself caught up and you see Leslie Spaulding and Maria Yorth, two young players who are looking for their first win, as well as Lori Kane, who finished in a tie for second here last year. Jean Bartholomew with that wonderful round of 63. Plenty of quality players in the hunt, including Kelly Robbins and Sayri Pak, heading into tomorrow's final round here on ESPN2. Julie Inkster, number two on the money list, has an opportunity for a birdie here to move to minus four. Just a reminder, the Stanley Cup playoffs resuming the first of three here on ESPN2, beginning with the Phoenix Coyotes trying to even up that series with the Blues, and it's coming up minutes right here on the Deuce. To the par 4 17th, and that is the ball of Rosie Jones. She eyes up her second shot. And Rosie has 153 yards, wind into her face, left side of the fairway. Actually, she could play any type shot she wants. Hole located right in the center. Likes to play the ball right to left, but she, her trajectory is kind of low, so she could chase it up if she could hit it on the front edge and just kind of chase this iron up towards the hole. Well, if this is the right club, it's a good shot. It's a wonderful shot. Very nice. So Rosie will have a chance to get to minus five. More golf coming your way on ESPN. Second round of the Seniors Home Depot Invitational. Entering the second round, there was a three-way tie at the top. Check it out on ESPN. The Mothership, 5.30 Eastern. Out of the sand, at 18, Sherry Steinhauer. Really an excellent shot from there. She didn't have a lot of green to work with, and the green sloped away from her, so she'll have a good opportunity for birdie. And particularly tough when you have to carry the ball a long way like that. That was a beautiful shot. Steinhauer just three strokes off the lead, a lead held by Leslie Spaulding. Let's go to 17, and Cindy Flom. 136, a little bit of a downhill line, trying to take it in nice and low. Another good-looking shot. Get all over it. Cindy Flom, even on the day, minus three for the tournament. And how about this advantage? Sayri only has 121 yards to the hole. And, Je and Judy, I couldn't agree more. She has wasted some opportunities out here today. I mean, she could really be in the hunt for this championship with just a mediocre putting round. She seems to have given herself a birdie opportunity on just about every hole we have seen. Bill and Judy, she has a putting average of 107, so as we all know and she knows herself, putting is her problem. She's just taking a little 9-iron, choking down on it, playing it back in her stance. Just trying to control the trajectory. And just a reminder, our coverage of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship continues tomorrow here on ESPN2. We'll see you at 2.30 Eastern. And, of course, you know, for more, log on to ESPN.com. It's part of the Go Network, go.com. As you take a last peek at our leaderboard, as you see, Leslie Spaulding and Maria Yorth, I'll tell you, Judy, quickly, two players looking for their first win. Not as experienced. The four at the top right there, um, none of the four have won a tournament, but the one who has a lot of experience for contending is Lori Kane. Look out tomorrow. No kidding about that. For Judy Rankin, Bill Kratzer, Mary Bryan, and the entire crew here, I'm Linda Cohn. Uh, thank you for joining us here. Hope you enjoyed today's second round. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network. Go.com. Outside America West Arena, Phoenix Coyotes fans enjoy the heat and sunshine of the desert. Now they want to put the freeze up. So you see the misty conditions these players would have to take part in.
one of those players, one of those five at the top coming in, the Aussie, Rachel Hetherington. This for birdie at one. And Hetherington moved to minus 11. What about Rosie Jones? Four shots off the pace coming into today. This for birdie at 11. Long putt from the upper shelf on the par three. And that drops for Jones, but you can never count out Kari Webb, the tour's leading money winner here at the tee. At, at the, the par three, 11. 153 yards up the hill. Stunning shot, and Webb would finish with a birdie there. Back to Hetherington. This her third shot at six. And Hetherington would birdie that hole. Back to Jones, off for bogey at 13. This for birdie at 14 for Rosie. And Jones gets back to minus 11. Now to live action and the par 4 10th and Rachel Hetherington. This would be for bogey. Bill Kratzer is there, Bill. And Rachel hit it over the green with her second shot. She watched Barb Mucha hit it into the water. I think that's why she hit it over. She she left her pitch shot. She kind of chilly dipped it, left it short. Now this putt for bogey to try to stay at 12 under par. Well, that's a big mistake right here. So that two-shot lead is now down to one and ready to drop one more. To the tee at 16, Annika Sorenstam, 155-yard par three. Probably just a nice, comfortable six iron in the heavy conditions today. Sorenstam coming into the day five strokes off the pace. Here's Kari Webb now. This is a four shot, the par five thirteenth. She'll have some work to do to make that par and stay at minus 10. As we give you the up-to-date leaderboard and it has a nice look to it, Rachel Hetherington, two stroke lead over Lori Kane, looking for her first win. And there's a group at minus 10, a group that includes Leslie Spaulding. the worldwide leader in sports, and the LPGA proudly present final round coverage of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. Remember those sunny skies the first two days? They're gone. I mean, Stockbridge, Georgia, it looks like Seattle, Washington. Misty, cloudy, and much, much cooler conditions. Sorenstam now for birdie here on 16. Yes, yes. And Annika Sorenstam. Making a move here, minus four on the day, and moves to minus nine for the tournament. Now on 13, Webb for par. The six-footer back up into the hill. So Kari enables herself to stay at minus 10, three behind, or two behind our leader, Rachel Hetherington, who's currently having plenty of trouble. Second shot now for Rosie Jones. On 15, the par four. Long par four, it has played as the most difficult hole on the golf course. To 12 now, the second shot ahead for Sherry Steinhauer on the par four. One hundred and twenty yards or so straight uphill. She cannot see the putting surface, just the top of the flag stick. A 
as we give you an update on the leaderboard, see where we all stand here. We're just getting going here on ESPN2. Final round coverage of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. And there you see, I told you about Heatherington's trouble. She found it tied at minus 11 now because she has company with Lori Kane. But you can see how many are in reach of our leaders. Leslie Spaulding is one back, and here she is at 12, the second shot. Spaulding's best finish on tour to date in her four years was a tie for sixth. And welcome to the third event of this Mercury LPGA Series, the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship, along with Judy Rankin. I'm Linda Cohn. Thank you for joining us again. Judy, we talked about the changing weather conditions. Went from sun to plenty of moisture, cooler temperatures. What does this all mean for the players, and who does it help? Golf course is in very good condition. It plays at just under 6,200 yards. It has played fast all week. There have been a lot of birdies made on this golf course. It is clearly not going to play fast today. You would expect this is going to favor some very long hitters, but who's having the best round of the day? This player right here, Rosie Jones, who we think would be at her best on a fast golf course. And there she is on 15, continuing her consistency. Jones, one player we have to look for, but we can't count on a player like Kari Webb. She is always lurking. She's the leading money winner on tour. You bet. Um, when this day started, 13 players were within three shots of the lead. Rachel Hetherington tried to separate herself with 33 on the front nine, but the slip there at 10 has brought a lot of players back into the mix with nine holes to play. And once again, the key is keeping it in the fairway, no question, especially with the moisture and this rough that can cause trouble, am I right? Long rough on this golf course. It's tough to play from and particularly tough now that it's wet. The young Korean now, Kim. This 153-yard hole today. Wind into the player's face. I don't know if they can feel it. I've seen a lot of balls come up short here, and that was a little fortunate bouncing forward. Mayun Kim, two strokes off the lead. Now Maria Yorth at minus nine, her second. Maria Yorth was one of those five players who came into the day tied with the lead at minus 10. Third shot for Sayri Pak here on 13. Come, come. So she'll have that left for a birdie attempt on the par five. Let's go back to 11, the par three, or Mucha. See if she can get back on track after that double bogey. This is just her third event this year, so her nerves may not be tournament tough and kind of a tough start on this backside. And just a reminder, you know, when we're talking the 11th hole, we're talking a 1999 Mercury Cougar. Any LPGA player with a hole-in-one at 11 this weekend is going to win a brand new 99 Mercury Cougar. We haven't had an ace here yet, but who knows? We're just starting today. Rachel Hetherington now at the par 3 11th. Well, the wind a little bit into her, like, like I said, maybe a little bit out of the left. What she needs to do now is she just has to realize she's still in control. She's still in the lead of the golf tournament. Let's hit a nice, solid shot. I've got two par 5s coming up. Judy, she, Judy and Linda, she got in the winner's circle last year, so she does know how to win. Final oh. official event of the season. She won the Betsy King. This needs get to get up. Get, get up. Get up. Get up. Well, she was fortunate. That ball could have easily come down well short. To the par 4 12th, Leslie Spaulding. This for Birdie. We're just getting going here. Final round coverage of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. We're glad you're with us. Three-way tie at the top. Stay tuned. Final round coverage of the LPGA's Chick-fil-A Charity Championship is being brought to you by...
Mercury, the official vehicle of the LPGA. Buy Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And buy Shell. Count on Shell. Imagine TV. Hey, Freddy, I need a little information. Well, my mind's a little fuzzy, Chief. Let's clear it up. Mercury Mountaineer, available V8, all-wheel drive, leather trim interior, 60 CD changer. I hear it's very comfortable. You're good, kid. What do you get your information, anyway? I guess my little secret. Power moonroof, standard fog lamps, just aluminum wheels. of our over 860 Chick-fil-A locations, I'd like to welcome you to the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. Played here at the beautiful Eagles Landing Country Club south of Atlanta. We have a stellar LPJ field with 95 out of the 100 top money winners, including Nancy Lopez, who is going to become the official hostess of this event beginning next year. Obviously, with a name like Chick-fil-A Charity Championship, Charity is a big part of this tournament, and the beneficiary of this tournament is Windshape Homes, a long-term foster care program started by our founder and chairman, S. Truett Cathy. We hope you enjoy the broadcast, and uh, remember, eat more chicken. Second shot of the par 4 14th for Julie Inkster, number two on the LPGA money list this year. And Julie is 101 to the whole location, front part of the green on this downhill par 4. Just a wedge shot. Just out of the first cut of rough. Still should be able to get some spin on it, though. Oh. Well, I'll tell you, another two or three feet, that would have been perfect. But the big mound in front, as you can see, kicked it back. And now she has a very difficult little pitch shot. Inkster came in just three shots off the place, but struggling at plus two. This for birdie. Maria Yorth. Well, you would like to make an aggressive run at birdies at this late stage of the game, but not an aggressive run like that. Third shot now for Lori Kane at 13, the par 5. That from the rough at a little area that splits the fairway right in front of the green. This par 5 has been reachable um, on Friday and Saturday, not reachable for many players in the field today. Kari Webb. And Kari has 92 to the whole location, although it's so severely downhill, it's playing more like about probably 78. This is sand wedge from the left side of the fairway. Oh, go. It's got to get up a little. Go. Oh, boy, did she get lucky, and what a good shot that's turned out to be. She's putting back up the hill for a birdie. Three wins this year for Kari Webb, seven for seven in top ten finishes. This for birdie for Ma Yoon Kim. Long putt across the green, a little turn from right to left. To the tee at 16, the par 3, 155 yards, and Rosie Jones. And again, sit down over there. Would have to be a good solid 6-iron for Rosie today, and she has left herself a good 40 feet, maybe more. Back to 11 now, Hetherington with a birdie try. Just barely on the green, coming up the hill, 28 feet. With the moisture and the mist uh, coming down today, these greens have slowed up considerably. Difficult to get it to the hole. So 
coming off that double bogey at 10. She will have that left for par. Rachel Hetherington, one of three tied at minus 11 at the top of the leaderboard. Second shot for Annika Sorensdam. Bit cloudy there on 17, the par four. Give you an idea of the kind of day it is. Wonderful shot from the left-hand fairway bunker. Gives herself a chance for a birdie and maybe to pull within one. There's Barb Mucha, the par 3 11th. Well, the front half of this green slopes towards the tee, towards the player, so this putt will move to her right six inches. Hit it, Barb. Go, go, go. Good putt. Clutch putt for Mucha now within two of the lead. She was one of those five who came in tied at the top off that course record 62 Saturday. The voices you've been hearing on the course, Bill Kratzert, following the group of Rachel Hetherington, Mayun Kim, and Barb Mucha. And Mary Bryan is with us, following the Julie Inkster group, Kari Webb, and Jean Bartholomew. Bartholomew with a career best 63 had tied the course record for just at least a few hours. She was the talk of the town until Barbucha. There's Bartholomew. She'll have that for par at 14. That gives you a good idea of the 14th green. The left side very high. The green all runs to the right and to the front right. This for birdie for Rosie Jones at the par 3 16th. Not a big slope, but a little swing from her right. Let's head back to 14 now, and Kari Webb, one stroke out of the lead. And Linda, this is not unlike a putt that she's made so many of them so far this year. Three victories already to her credit. She has not finished out of the top 10. And this one's straight up the hill, about an eight footer. <coughs> this for Birdie to move to 11 under. She look, took a good look at the leaderboard on the last hole. At this point, she doesn't know Rachel Hetherington, double bogey 10. But her caddy uh, is informed of it, and he's going to tell her after she putts. She's gone to that cross handed or left hand low method this year and probably changed her putting stroke by two or three putts around feels that she doesn't cut it anymore as she was doing towards the end of the year. This for Birdie. Oh, yeah. So Kari Webb joins the group at the top of the leaderboard. <coughs> to the par 316th. This for par for Rosie Jones, one of our co-leaders. Inside right edge pot. Second bogey of the day for Rosie. Six birdies on the day. So Rosie will fall out of the lead. There's Kelly Robbins. Second shot. The par 5, 18th. Oh. There's a woman who can reach it. Terrific shot up the hill over the bunker, left it below the hole. There are a lot of players a little farther back in the field that would love to have that eagle opportunity come the end of the day. This for birdie for Lori Kane. And the lead. Get in there. Get in there. Par putt for Julie Inkster at 14. Look on her face. You sense the disappointment as she struggles today with a plus two round. She's worked on her golf swing a lot this week. Um, her teacher, Mike McGettrick, was here early in the week, and I have seen her on the practice tee um, working on mechanics a good bit. The par four 12th and Mi Yoon Kim. Well, this hole just a fairway medal off the tee. This hole dotted with bunkers all up down the left side. You know, you just don't want to get into the bunkers. Okay. Yeah. This is a good looking shot. Needs to hit a little softly to stay short of that rough, though. Yeah. About a foot short of it. Good shape. 
as players stand on the tee at 12, visually they see 10 different bunkers. A couple of them are greenside bunkers, but there's a good shot right there. Intimidating for the recreational golfer. For these players, maybe not so. You just hit it right over the left-hand corner of the right-hand bunker. Well, Rachel also with a medal. Just laying it up down the right-hand side. Good shape. You know, there are many changes, many areas of this course to look for. Bill Kratzer looks at the evolution changes. One of the challenges this week that the players have faced here at Eagles Landing Country Club have been the elevation changes. Now, when a player plays downhill, you can see the flag, you can see the bottom of the cup. That's not too difficult. What's difficult is when you play uphill. And here at number 12, a perfect example. They drive down into the flat, but their second shot is uphill. You can't see the bottom of the flag. You have to trust your yardage. The word I was trying to say was elevation changes. We knew that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good look at 12 from the green looking back. Um, you don't see the elevation change on your television screen the way a player sees it. Um, the second shot is played from so far down below that all you see is the flag at the top of the flag stick. Annika Sorenstam, this for birdie at 17. Yeah. So Annika moves to minus 10. Terrific birdie after driving into the fairway bunker. Sorenstam looking for her first victory of the year. She didn't win her first last year until the month of June at the Mercury Series Michelob Light Classic. How do you like this leaderboard? Three tied at the top, two others, one behind. We'll be back. We have entered the era of the... Kelly Robbins for Eagle here on 18, the par 5. She could make this for a final round of 67. Yeah. She's got it. Kelly Robbins, fourth on the money list this year, the winner at the Hell South inaugural as she defended her title there, the first of the Mercury LPGA Series. Nice way to finish. Helen Dobson, this for Eagle at 13, the par five. Oh. All around good putt yeah. for the English woman. The rim rocker for Helen. As we take a look at the leaderboard, Kari Webb, one of three at minus 11, three others at minus 10, including Kelly Robbins. You saw her eagle putt on 18. You know, players had to be at even par one for... <laughs> I think you are right. Just... Just 22 years old is Mi Yoon Kim. Earlier, it was Rachel Hetherington, her second shot at the par 4 12th. From 121, took it in quite low. Barb Mucha now. Boy, it was from the thick rough, Bill. Boy, and she did all she could do. I think that's a smart play, Judy. I went over and looked at her lies. She had 110 yards. So many bunkers in front of her. It could have just absolutely wrapped it around and hit one of those. Second shot on the par 4, 17 for Rosie Jones. Well, doing battle in the area of that left-hand fairway bunker, a good 165, 170 yards in. Terrific shot. Just five of her 14 rounds under par coming into this event, but then she had those back-to-back -back 69s. Julie Inkster now. This is her second shot at the par 4, 15th. Hit a good drive here, Linda. She is 155 to the pin. That's 33 paces back from the green. Cut a little to the right-hand side, so Julie has a good angle in from the left-hand side of the fairway. And She's definitely struggled with her swing today, really working on those mechanics, even on the golf course, Judy. And that is six iron. And what's amazing is that as much moisture that's been around all day long, the greens really have stayed pretty hard. Third shot now at 12 for Barb Mucha. 
the par four. Right at 80 yards. Took double bogey out of the equation. I think one of her strengths is that she is a very patient player. She can accept a bad shot and make the best of it, maybe um, in what seems like a more difficult way by playing safe, but that is one of the strengths of her golf game. Second shot for Lori Kane on the par 4 14th. That's how you get in position for your first win of the year. Lori Kane, one of our co-leaders at minus 11. Remember, her career best finish came right here on this Eagles Landing Country Club course. Kari Webb and Canadian Lori Kane. Those are the three who are at the top of this leaderboard here on the final day of the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship. Kelly Robbins in the house with her 67. Rosie Jones still looking to make a run. She's just one back. And Annika Sorenstam playing the par 5 18th, looking for birdie. Barmucha. Coming down the hill, pretty much the same line that Kim just missed on. <laughs> well, I can't believe that didn't turn at all. Mucha will stay two shots off the pace. Third shot for Kari Webb. And that's a shot you, shot you just need touch and feel, and that was very, very good for Kari Webb. And she knows where she stands now. She knows she's tied for the lead. Rosie Jones eyeing a birdie chance here. This would tie her for the lead. <coughs> Slowish putt. She needs to hit it a little firm. It should die off to her right. Right in the 15-foot range. <laughs> Rosie skipped the first six events of the LPGA season this year just to take a bit of a rest. Second shot at 18, the par 5 for Annika Sorenstam. Well, in the bunker, the moisture could make the bunkers a little more difficult to play from today. Possible to bury it in the sand. A birdie try ahead on the par 4 14th for Lori Kane. Yeah. So Lori Kane takes sole possession of the lead. Minus 12, and you can see the excitement. But then again, she never hides any of her emotion. She's always so positive. Well, all of her emotions seem to run to to the positive. Um, she's always up. She doesn't allow herself to get down, and um, that's a good way to play golf. This for birdie for Leslie Spaulding on the green at 13, the par 5. The young player who had 10 birdies in her opening round of 66. That round of 66 included a triple bogey. There are some pretty good playing for 17 holes there. Spalding lives in the Tampa area now, but Billings, Montana is rather proud of Leslie Spalding. Lori Kane with that one-stroke edge over Kari Webb and Rachel Hetherington, a pair of Australians who were born in Queensland. Both entering the tour, joining the tour in 1996. Hetherington, of course, and Kari Webb Shadow. She was the Rolex Rookie of the Year, winning over a million dollars. Well, certainly the most um, heralded rookie on this tour since Nancy Lopez. Just recently, Kari Webb set a pair of LPGA records when uh, she crossed the fastest across the, th the third shot now on the par five for Annika Sorenstam. So she will have that short putt for a four at 18. And that will take her to minus 11. And she would have company at minus 11. But of course at minus 12 on top of this leaderboard is Lori Kane. And just a reminder, more golf coming up on the Mothership, ESPN. The final round of the Home Depot Invitational comes your way at 5.30 Eastern. Alan Doyle, one of the three, tied at the top, entering today's action. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. Lori Kane, the Canadian looking for her first win on the LPGA Tour, is up by one over two. 
Nothing says love like beef. He won three times this year. In the hunt on the 16th tee is Jean Bartholomew. Coming off the nice birdie at 15, and this is 155 yards. Pin cut back left. And she did the commentary for us there. She pulled it. I think she might describe herself as a type A personality, don't you, Mary? I would agree with you 100%, Judy. Now, Kari Webb, hole sits up perfectly for her because it's cut left side. She likes to work the ball right to left. Closer look at the par 3 16th hole. Here's Mary Bryan. Many times when a golfer plays a par 3, they hit the same club every time they play the hole. But here at the 16th hole at Eagles Landing, Tom Fazio's designed a par 3 that plays like three separate holes. First day, the hole location was in the front right. No trouble in front of the green. It played about 140. The players hit seven irons and eight irons. Then we go back about 12, maybe 13 paces to the center of the green. And what happens? Well, the bunker comes into play. It played about 149. Players hit six irons and seven irons. Now today, the last pin placement, back left. And look what happens. The water comes into play, the bunker comes into play, and the yardage today is 155. So the players have played the same hole every day, but it's been like three separate holes. Thank you, Mary. Lori Kane at 15, second shot. It's 404 yards. It takes a turn to the right in the driving area. It has played very long this week because it has played back into the wind. Um, the wind is not much of a factor today, but of course the heavy air probably gives you the same result. The hole very deep in the green today, 33 paces back from the front. Second shot at 18, the par five, Rosie Jones. Not reachable for Rosie today. Maybe she could have put the ball just on the front, but that's a pretty good leave because she'll have a little three-quarter sand wedge up to the hole location. Par three, 16th, Julie Inkster, 155 yards. Inkster turning 39 years old in June. Says in a couple years she's going to play a more reduced schedule to spend more time with those two beautiful girls she has. Maybe 10 to 13 tournaments a year. Well, she doesn't want to do that just right now, though, because two more she years. is really in her prime, playing <laughs> great. you got to sit down with her and tell her that, will you please? <laughs> Lori Kane looking for her first here on the LPGA Tour. Will it come at the Chick-fil-A Charity Championship? Linda Cohn, Judy Rankin with you. We'll be right back. Listen, the latest technology in women's golf doesn't have to be expensive. You see the Square 2 Club? It was designed for the way we play golf, and all this patented technology costs hundreds less. Imagine what you could do with that extra cash. The big guys don't want you to know about Square 2, but now... Stroke back at minus 11. And coming up the hill, just 74 yards. But this group is being timed. They are out of position, so they're hitting their shots. A little bit quicker than they'd like, but... Had a good result right there. And what that means is there is an official um, sitting and following that group, timing the amount of time they take on their particular shot. Inkster, now for birdie on 16. 25 footer, slightly up the hill. Now back to live action, Kari Webb. And this is a very makeable putt again for Kari. <sighs> could go, could go. Nope. And Kari knows where she stands, so she remains now at 11, but with two birdie holes in front of her. And Kari Webb has made four at the 18th in both of the previous rounds. Kari leading the LPGA in six categories this year. This for birdie for our leader, Lori Kane, in a two-stroke lead. 
putts without a glove, plays with her glove on, is not doing that this week because of an injured thumb and a tape job that makes the glove difficult to get off and on. It's maybe going so well that we won't ever see the glove again. I know she might have to consider that. A year ago, she was the one giving chase of the lead. It's interesting to see how she's playing in the lead here. Third shot now, Rosie Jones. Key sand wedge for Rosie Jones. So she'll have that for a birdie try on the par 5 18th. Rosie, one of three, two behind Lori Kane. Earlier, Jean Bartholomew on 16. Her best tournament of the year, the first tournament of the year where she finished fifth, but she is giving herself more and more opportunities to get the experience of playing at the end of the day on Sunday and being in contention. Leslie Spaulding in contention. She's at minus nine. She could move it to minus ten. Over the ridge in the green, breaking to the left. They call her Lester on the tour. I haven't decided if that's good or bad. I'm not really sure either, and I'd rather not know the meaning of it. I'm assuming it has to do with Leslie, Lester, L-E-S, at the beginning of each name. The skies continue to be dark. It continues to be misty and cool. They say it's 69 degrees, but we stepped out there. I, f I feel like it's 54. Well, of course, we were used to uh, pretty warm temperatures earlier right. in the week. Summer-like conditions the first two days here. Rachel Hetherington now. This from four feet, not a lot of movement. Just needs to hit a nice, solid putt. Oof. That looked like a pull, Judy. Yeah, four at the par five uh, was really needed at this point for Rachel Hetherington. When you're playing this back nine in contention, you know you need to birdie 13 and 18. Want to know a little bit more about Rachel Hetherington? I told you she's from Australia, the same hometown as Kari Webb. And joining the tour, as she did, one title. It came last year at the Betsy King. She's not happy there. She also has um, played some professional golf, though, in Europe and Australia. One in Australia, one in Spain, one in Germany. So uh, she is not a rookie at this winning thing. That's Maria Yorth, second-year Swede on the tour. This to move to minus nine. That would put her three behind our leader, Lori Kane. Putter has not been good to Maria this year, but it has been very good to her this week. A putting average of 109 on the tour this year. She came into the day tied at the top, one of five, but she was able to get it close, and that's why they were falling the first two days. And the putts have been falling for Lori Kane as she tries to finally win number one. Will it come here at Eagles Landing? Stay with us. Kane, her natural shot moves just right to left. Good hole placement for Lori. Good swing there, Lori. Mm -hmm. Loveless, that's going to be the ticket from now on. <laughs> Might turn out to be her nickname as well. She has her thumb and her index finger on her left hand actually taped together. Um, it is helping with the thumb problem and uh, makes the glove just too difficult to deal with. She says the biggest pain is when she uses her driver. That's when she feels it the most. Or maybe the remote in the evening. Is that like <laughs> remote thumb? Well, if she is, she's watching Stanley Cup playoff games on ESPN and ESPN2. Lori, a big, big, big hockey fan. This is the tee at 14, the par 4, and Rachel Hetherington. Also with a fairway wood. Good looking shot right up the right side, drawing in. Perfect position down in the flat. Final hole for Sari Pak, her third on the par five. 
Well, we talked about slow play a moment ago with the last group. You are not timed unless you are out of position. We get word that Sayre Park was given a two-stroke penalty back at the 15th hole for playing too slowly when she was out of position. Another learning experience for the 22-year-old uh, young Korean, Sayre Park. And welcome. We're happy to be joined by the Vice President of Marketing at Chick-fil-A Charity Championship, Steve Robinson. And thank you for joining us, Steve. My pleasure. Thank you, Listen, Linda. I'll tell you, for a final day, you got to love this. I mean, it's a jam-packed leaderboard, plenty tied at the top, and five or six players can win this thing. Some great, great golf. Great leaderboard. What is it about this tournament? It seems like every year the players just come out for this. An outstanding field. 44 of the top 50 money winners mm -hmm. were in this field of mm -hmm. 144. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have several things going for us. We uh, come off a, usually a one or two week break after the Masters. They take off. And uh, this is a tremendous golf course. It's a Fazio layout. And uh, this, this year's preparation is without a doubt the best it's ever been. And I think they like playing it. And maybe they just like all the free chicken sandwiches we give them when they come. Well, you know what? We like those, too, but I wasn't <laughs> going to go there, but I might as well. They're delicious. Rosie Jones now. Two off the lead. Tricky putt moves from the left. Jones will have that to stay at one behind. Just to say two behind. The tap in for a round of 68 today. Well, Steve Robinson, thank you so much for well, joining us and appreciate continued it. success here at the Chick-fil-A. Well, we appreciate the support of ESPN, ESPN2. All righty. Very much. Thanks, Steve. Back to the action. Second at 17 for Kari Webb, one stroke behind. Kari Kane. Uh, Linda Kari's 151 breeze from left to right. She likes to work the ball right to left. It would be perfect for her. Just take it, hold it up against that wind, and it's going right at the pin. May catch the bunker, though. Ooh. Keep back. Kind of drifted off to the right on her, so she's left herself with a tough opportunity for birdie. <laughs> to the par 4 14th, and Mihyun Kim. Coming out of the left rough, I had a good look at this lie. Really not as bad as it could have been. She's in a low area where there's a lot of drainage, but she drew a pretty good lie. has 94 yards. Well, once again, that grass just wrapped around the club, and she, oh, that's ugly. I can see the lie from here, and that one is buried. This for birdie on 18 for Sayre. Second shot for Barb Mucha in the par 4 14th. Just 93 yards. Just keep it underneath the hole if at all possible. Ooh, that hit hard right on that front fringe, and that's right in the center of that ridge. It's going to be hard putt. Barb Mucha said, you know, coming off that 62, she didn't know what to expect on this day. She says, I could come out and shoot another 62, or I can shoot 80. She actually yesterday said she didn't feel confident at all about her swing, but she says that's how crazy this game is. Second at 14 for Rachel Hetherington. Just one off the lead. This group's still on the clock, so they're playing quite quickly. That from 87 yards. This, look, this is, looks good if it's got spin. No. Just kind of kicked a little left. Flag high. Disconcerting for players to uh, play while they're on the clock with an official watching. No, no, no. Sure. Rosie Jones now. This for par at 18, and she finishes up. So Rosie Jones finishes with a 68, minus 10 for the tournament, two back of the lead. The par, the birdie putt of Cindy Fig Courier, so she'll have that for par at 16. Cindy four off the lead at minus eight. Second now for Leslie Spaulding at 15, the par four. This for birdie for Kari Webb on the par 4 17th.
Well, now, Linda and Judy, I think she's got to make an eagle at 18 if she wants to win this tournament, and I think she knows that at this point in time. And Kari Webb, on the strength of her big victory in Phoenix at the Valley of the Sun, the standard register ping, she stands atop of the Mercury bonus pool of our series. A series for the first place winner gets a $100,000 bonus and $250,000 to be awarded throughout the events. Miyu Kim now. Very difficult line, a little bit on the upslope. Very difficult to judge the speed and distance. Oh, well, she's done a nice job, though. Shot. That shot's a lot better than it looks. Her previous best finish on the tour was a tie for 19th, which came back at Naples for her back in January on the LPGA Tour this year. To 16 now, and our leader, Lori Kane. Well, we've seen a lot of putts around this hole already today. Not any big slopes. Uh, she would want to start this just outside the left edge of the hole, but depending on the speed, um, if she hits it very firmly, not much break at all. If Kane makes this, she will open up a two-stroke lead on Annika Sorenstam, Kari Webb, and Rachel Hetherington. As you get to know a little bit more about Lori Kane. Well, her best finish is second, and there have been numerous second-place finishes for Lori Kane. Um, two or maybe three, if memory serves me well, losses in playoffs for Lori Kane. So she has gotten as close as tying for a championship, just hasn't made the winner's circle yet. Four top tens and nine events this season for Lori. Leads the tour this season in rounds under par. All right. Lori will have that par putt to stay one up on a group of three. Let's head to 17 now, the par four 17th. And Jean Bartholomew. Well, a look at a look at the final hole. Um, it's going to be a key hole, clearly, for Lori Kane, for Kari Webb at the moment. Um, the two bunkers at the right. Uh, your aim point would be right here, just at the edge of the left hand of the right side bunkers. Um, a good tee shot started at that point, turned just back into the fairway, will give Kari Webb, I believe, a chance to reach his green in two, and possibly Lori Kane. Webb has birdied 18 the first two days, but as you said earlier, she could use that eagle. There's no question she needs it. And there's a look back from the green into the fairway. The water left is certainly a factor. Not so often do we see players hit the ball into the water left, but it seems to play a part in, as to how you drive the ball. Back to the par 415, Leslie Spaulding for birdie. Slightly uphill, not a lot of movement. <laughs> nice effort, but she'll have that for par and she would stay at minus nine, three shots behind. Her good play this week may be a little bit of a surprise. She's missed three cuts this year. Her best finish in this 99 season is a tie for 31st. Back to the par five, 18th. Jean Bartholomew, who has hit some long drives today, in fact, has been a couple times in front of Kari Webb by about 15 or 20 yards. Go, 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 go. Didn't quite catch that one. Get out there, but certainly playable, and it's right just a little bit past Julie Inkster's tee shot. Bartholomew averages over 256 yards off the tee. That's the tee at 15. Rachel Hetherington. That's a good-looking tee shot right down the side of the fairway. Good shape. Good look there at the 15th fairway. You can see the turn in the fairway right at the fairway bunkers. It turns back to the right. Kari Webb now on the par 5, 18th. And this is the key tee shot. She must put this in play and must put it long. Get on that green in two. It's got to turn back a little. And it is going to be great. She's going to be on the right-hand side of the fairway, although she'll still be a couple hundred yards from the green, but good opportunity to get home in two and tie for the lead. 
Again, Kari Webb had birdied that hole the first two days. Is there an eagle left in that bag? But it's Laurie Kane in control by one.